One of the best features in Thinkorswim is the ability to create incredibly advanced scans to find stocks you're actually interested in trading. The tool within here is incredibly advanced and a bit confusing if you're brand new to it, but today we're going to cover all the basics. In this video, we're going to learn how the scanner works and then go through a real life example of creating a custom scan. Now, in order to begin, we're going to start by first opening up our scan tab right up here at the top. And today we're going to be focusing on the stock hacker. Eventually, you might use this tool to find specific option contracts that meet your criteria or spreads that meet your criteria, but for now I want to stick with the basics. Now, if this is your very first time using the scan tool, your page should look identical to mine. At the top here, we can see that it's currently scanning through all publicly traded stocks, while down here below we find a few pre-selected filters for net change, for volume, and for percent change. A lot of people seem to ignore these filters up here at the top, but eventually you're going to find them to be incredibly useful. So for example, let's say we didn't want to scan through every single stock available like we currently are. We only wanted to look through companies in the S&P 500. So to change that, we're going to go ahead and click on all stocks here, come down to public S through W, and then come over here to the right and flip it over to S&P 500. Now let's also say, for whatever reason, I'm only looking for companies in the energy sector. So just like before, we're going to come up here to intersect with, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And in this case, I want to filter by a specific industry. So we'll come down here below and find energy. And for this one, I'm going to select all energy companies. Once we've got both of those set, if that was all I was looking for, I could come down here below and hit the scan tab. And now I can see all the companies in the energy sector within the S&P 500. Currently, it looks like there are 23 stocks that meet these two basic criteria, but we can continue adding filters to really narrow down this list. Since we already have three empty filters up here above, let's go ahead and begin with those. To start with, let's say we only wanted to look at stocks in a particular price range, somewhere between $10 and $200 a share. So the first thing I have to do is go ahead and flip this over from net change to either last or the mark price. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the mark if I can find it in the list here. And now with the mark selected, I can come over here to the minimum price and I'm going to go ahead and throw in 10 in there. And as for the max, we'll come over here to the right and throw in 200, I believe is what I said. I also want to avoid trading small companies, so for this next one, I'm going to come over here and flip the volume filter over to market cap in millions. Just as a basic starting point, let's come over here and put a thousand as the minimum, so a thousand millions or one billion dollars. And finally, for the last one in the list here, let's also say we wanted to find companies paying a dividend with a yield greater than 5%. So just like before, we'll come over here to the filter and go ahead and flip that over to yield or dividend yield. And then we'll come over here to the minimum and put in five there, which is going to be 5%. Once we've got those filters set, let's go ahead and see the results by coming down below and hitting scan one more time. And this time it looks like there's only three companies out there that currently meet this criteria. But like I said earlier, you can basically scan for anything. These three were just the basics. Simple stock filters that anyone can use to narrow down the list a little bit further. However, this tool gets a lot more fun when you start adding study filters, looking for specific conditions that meet all of your buy or sell signals, whatever that might be. This is also where it starts to get a little bit confusing, so I'm going to go through it slowly, but this is mainly to show you what's possible inside of this tool. You're definitely not going to master it in a single day, so don't feel like you need to memorize it all at once. But now in order for us to add that study filter, in order for us to get started, we are going to have to add a new filter by coming up here to the upper right hand corner and clicking add filter. Here you can then see a little menu letting you add additional stock filters like we've already been using, or option filters, fundamental filters, study filters, or even pattern filters. In this example, we are going to be looking for a crossover on the MACD, so we're going to go ahead and click on the studies button here. And immediately you can see a brand new filter has been added below our stock filters that we were just using, and by default it defaults to the ADX crossover. Before we make our change and flip that over to the MACD, we should probably go over what it is I'm even talking about, what it is I'm looking for. So coming up here above and heading over to the charts page, 
If you look below my current chart on SPY, I actually have a MACD study right below my chart. Now what I want my scan to do is look for a crossover between these two lines, between the blue line and the yellow line. Specifically, I'll be looking for that blue line, which is the MACD line, to have crossed above the yellow line within the past day. So now that we got an idea on what it is I'm looking for, let's go ahead and head back to the scan tab right up here above. We can then find our study filter right down here below, currently defaults to ADX crossover. Go ahead and click on that. You can then see down below a menu with a bunch of other pre-made study filters that we could use, but these seem to be the more popular indicators and it's really only a tiny slice of what we can do in here. So in this case, in order to actually learn how this thing works, let's go ahead and make it ourselves by coming down here below and clicking custom. We then get this brand new pop-up window and you can see the ADX crossover is still in here. So in order for us to start fresh, let's come over here to the right and just delete whatever's in here. Then what we can do is come down here below and add our own conditions. And remember, what we're gonna be looking for is the MACD, specifically scanning for stocks that have had the MACD line, which was the blue line, recently cross above the signal line or the yellow line on our chart. So we'll go ahead and begin by coming up here and selecting a condition. And in our case, the MACD is a study. So we're gonna come down below and click on study. I can then use the search box here at the top to type in MACD in order to find and click on it here. And now by default, we can see it defaults to the value line, which is actually the MACD line. So I don't actually have to change anything here on the left but I do need to specify that I'm looking for a crossover of the value line above the signal line. So right here in the center, you can see I've now clicked on crosses above, and now I can come over here to the right and specify what it's crossing above. In this case, we're gonna be using the signal line, the MACD, so I'm again gonna click on select a condition. It's gonna be the study condition, and we will once again search for MACD. The one thing I do have to change over here on the right is to be sure and flip this over from the value line to the average line, which again is the signal line in Thinkorswim. And now that that's set, the very last thing that I can adjust is how recently that crossover has occurred. We can do that by simply scrolling down this page here. And right now you can see that mine is set to within one bar. So right now I am only looking for a crossover that's occurred within the last day but I could actually adjust that to three days or I could adjust it to five days, really whatever it is that I'm looking for. Now, in my case, I did say I'm looking for a recent crossover. So let's go ahead and flip this over to, let's just say two days for now. And now that I'm happy with that, we'll just go ahead and hit save. And also I will mention that the reason I was using a day as a reference period is because up here in the upper left-hand corner, I currently do have D or day selected. So if you're a day trader and instead use a five minute chart or one minute chart, here's where you can come and simply click on this time period here. And then this list below, just select whatever time period you wanna use. I'm okay with just using a daily aggregation for now. So I'm gonna come down below and hit okay to lock this in. Now that we've completely finished making our scan, let's come over here to the right and go ahead and hit the scan tab. And in my case, it doesn't look like I got any results with this one. So let's come back up here above and flip this over from only companies in the S&P to any company in the energy sector. So I'm gonna come back up here above and flip this back over to all stocks. Let's come back down below and hit scan again. And hopefully, there we go. I've got three results this time. Now, before I save this, I usually like to make sure that I made it correctly by actually looking at a couple and making sure that it matches. So looking here in the list of results, it looks like the very first company that met my criteria was DMLP. So to confirm it did have a MACD crossover in the last two days, let's come back up here to our charts. And let me just throw that symbol in again, DMLP. And now coming down below, if we look at the MACD, it looks like it did technically cross over on, looks like the six. So technically, even though it barely crossed above, it does meet my criteria. And now that I've actually verified that it's working properly, let's be sure to save this by heading back over to the scan tab. And then we'll come over here to the menu icon in the upper right hand corner. And then we're gonna hit the save scan query button. I'll then save it as something I can actually remember. So in this case, I'm gonna name it MACD cross and I'll give it a two day reference period. I can then come back down below and hit save. 
And now in order to access that in the future or any other scan that I've made and saved, I can come back up here to the menu icon, but this time come over to load scan query, then find my personal sets. And right here, you can see my three scans that I currently have saved on this account. I've got the high volatility stock scanner, I've got Stochastic Cross, and then most importantly, I've got the one that we just saved. But hopefully this helps. It was just enough to get you started with the basics of the scanner and its capabilities within Thinkorswim. But as you can see, you can essentially scan for anything, so it is going to take a little bit of practice to really get the hang of it. If you are interested in learning more, I have made a bunch of other videos going in depth on specific types of scans, so go ahead and check those out if you're interested. Otherwise, good luck with it, and I hope to see you on the next video.